What's up, y'all? I am Marcus, also known as EMB, and welcome back to From the Dark. Today we are gonna clip through the stairs here. <laughs> we are rocking our... Let's call it an old hunter build. Let's just call it an old hunter build. Let's just call it that. Very stylish Chester with the Ferris hat. That's Fyhender. I've got Ring of Steel protection along with Favor. We don't need Havels today. We can actually fast roll without it. So, uh, In the previous episode, we picked up a very important item, this Crest Key. Bent Crest Key. The grooves of the crest are enchanted. The door sealed with a powerful spell. Well... Time to unlock the door that is bound by a powerful spell. Right over here. One of the coolest characters in the series by far. Right up to Slatter. See the wood shavings. His technique of slow, 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 fast, 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 fast. Probably reminds you of the giant blacksmith. I think that's intentional. This extremely large great bow. These logs here. This is Hawkeye Goff. Visitor, have we? Thou must be the one who freed Artorius. An old friend he was. Thanks to thee, he left this world with honor intact. And here I am, retired and blind. A little help to thee, I'm afraid. Fascinating couple of points here. First of all, he knows of Artorius's fate. It, it really begs the question, was he here in Ulusil before Artorius came to stop the Abyss? Was he already trapped? That doesn't really... That, that seems a bit odd, if so, because you would think that Artorius would have just freed him. Or did he come here after Artorius's fall and was then captured and I don't know. It, it's really interesting. But another point is that Goff, at the very least, believes he is blind. If you look at his helmet, you'll you'll see a hint as to the truth of what's coming. But, uh... Yeah. Such a cool character. If thou seeketh to explore this domain, be wary of a black dragon. I fear thee no match for this terrible beast. Me? Mm. There's very little to be said. What good is a dog with no hands to hunt? But I'm lucky to be alive, I suppose. That's another line that just always gets me. Me, there's little, very little to be said. What use is a dog with no hairs to hunt? I'm lucky to be alive, I suppose. We'll see soon that Lord Gwen actually treated Hawkeye Golf pretty well. So it's kind of my belief that at this point in the timeline, Gwen has already left and linked the flame, and that Golf's treatment is uh, a result of others, not Lord Gwen, like whoever was in charge after Gwen left. There are no hares left to hunt. He's a dragon slayer. So. His, his, what he's saying basically is that, well, there's no dragons left, so they don't need me anymore. And so I'm locked away here. I'm lucky to be alive. Like, at least they didn't kill me. Is, is, that's how it, that's the impression that it gives me. And I don't think it's Gwen that treated him this way. Is, and for, I've got reasons and I'll, I'll show them when we get there. Uh, he's the one carving these. 
head carved of arch trees by Goff in his imprisonment. Goff imparts an emotion to each and every completed carving, which helps him achieve personal enlightenment. Do you sense the amicability in its eyes? Hello. Have another look. Is this not a face of gratitude? He's got his shit for sale. <laughs> That's how I always looked at that. And he's got some shards. Farewell, human. Lead thy life as thou seest fit. A very interesting dismissal there, or, or parting. Like, instead of let the flames guide thee, or, or praise Gwen, or what have you. Farewell, human. Live thou, live thine life as thou, thou seest fit. I can't remember how he said it. You, you guys know what I'm saying. You heard him. You fucking heard him. All right. Um, golf is gonna help us out with a little bit of dragon hunting. Yes, yes, yes. Um, there, you, you can actually kill this dragon without golf's help, and I might do it on another character, or I might do it in New Game Plus. But um, we would miss out on some dialogues if I did that. So. We are just going to play it normally here. And it's also fascinating to me that Golf doesn't mention Kier in there. I've heard something about some cut content with that, but I haven't personally seen it. But it also, I find it very fascinating that three out of the four of the Knights of Gwyn are found in this fucking building. You you battle Corrupted Artorius... You encounter Kieran grieving for him, and then just steps away up the stairs is a Hawkeye Golf imprisoned. But neither Kieran nor Ortorius sought to free him. Pretty fascinating. Pretty fascinating. But Golf at least counts Artorius as a dear friend. No going down here Gonna do a little dragon hunting let me see this abyssal growth no effect of it doesn't do anything that I'm aware of it's just kind of a visual prop but kind of gives you an idea as to what the environment's like and there's dogs there's always fucking dogs man these dogs pull together Oh man, what the hell was that shit? Pull together, die together. Oh. Oh, that was. We die! <laughs> there we go. Little bit of duel in there. Large soul of brave warrior. And I see the water coming out from the cliff side here. Oh, hello. I shouldn't have used R2. I knew I shouldn't have used R2. There we go. Little R1 action is plenty to kill these guys. No sense in getting crazy, getting fancy with it. Uh... These trees here, these these fallen trees, or felled trees, I should say, because those are smooth cuts. Like somebody's cut these trees down for a purpose, right? And I wonder... I wonder if Artorius or Kieran or somebody is actually bringing wood of arch trees to golf to actually carve. He seems to have... Plenty of plenty of supply up there, doesn't he? I wonder. It may be nothing, but you know, why smoothly cut trees here? You know, it it just seems like it's an environmental hint as at to something. Like they they normally don't put stuff in without reason. Like, it might be something, it might be a little bit of nothing, a story that they have hidden behind the scenes that they never have any intention of ever revealing. They don't really anticipate anybody's ever actually going to put it together, but it adds a point of interest in the world. Uh, and here we see this. It looks like some of these were used to create this gate here. Just 
But who? Now. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. This area should look a bit familiar. And the crystal lizard right there. Shazam! Alright. We've seen Calamite at this point. Here in this basin. So now, change out my magic. I don't want Homeward, I want maybe just heal. Heal's fine. I believe I picked up some Homeward Bones already anyway. And just because we can. Now that we've actually encountered Calamite in the basin, we should be able to enlist Goff's help in slaying this beast. Fascinating too that the uh, ancient dragons are described as immortals, but don't think that means that they can't necessarily be killed. It's funny because we find one ancient dragon in the game that can't be killed, but Calamite appears to be an ancient dragon capable of being killed. They were supposed to be immortal due to the scales of immortality, but they also had the primordial crystal, and I wonder if not having that is part of what's allowed them to be, how do you call it, tainted by the world and to actually become mortal to some extent. I don't know. But Mara, is the black dragon posing the duress? Yes, Lord Goff, it certainly is. Yes, I thought as much. He's called Calamite, ferocious dragon indeed. Even mighty Anna Londra dared not provoke his ire. I see little good coming from this, but... My intent is to persevere to the bitter end. Of course. Because dragon slaying, that, that, my friends, is knighthood's highest calling. <laughs> good, good. What is bravery without a dash of recklessness? I've taken a liking to thee. And I owe thee much for thy service to Artorius. Now, watch and see how Goth hunts dragons. was never loosed. That bat will be grounded for a good spell. The rest is in thine hands. I await good tidings. Ah, dragon slaying. Knighthood's highest calling. I love how in that cutscene you actually see like a glimpse of An Orlando above. Even mighty An Orlando dared not provoke the ire of Calamite. Ah, 
Hello there. What of Calamit? He is an ancient dragon. Scribe or no, he will not be put down easily. The dragons shall never be forgotten. We knights fought valiantly, but for every one of them, we lost three score of our own. Exhilaration, pride, hatred, rage. The dragons teased out our dearest emotions. Thou will understand one day. At our twilight, old thoughts return. And great waves of nostalgia. Just such a deep character. Talking about the rivalry between the knights and the dragons, or rather their, their conflicts, and how the dragons were important to the knights. You know what I mean? Like it it's what made him feel alive hunting dragons. And also, this is something else going back to that cutscene. I love how when he stands up, the sawdust just kind of shakes off of him, and you feel him, you see him feeling around for his bow since he can't see right now. I suspect thou hast taken a gander at it, but the dark of the abyss, which swallowed poor Artorias, threatens to devour our entire land of Ulysseo. It seems that this dire fate is unavoidable, but seduced by a dark serpent or no, they awoke that thing themselves and drove it mad. One's demise is always one's own making. Seduced by a dark serpent or no, once again, more of a um, hint that either Frampt or Kath, probably Kath, but Frampt is also a possibility, uh, has provoked the people of Ulusil into awakening Manus and driving him mad. Another fascinating point is that Goff refers to this as our land of Ulusil. Now, perhaps, you know, An Orlando rules all the lands nearby here. We can see An Orlando above right there. Um, Perhaps, or perhaps golf is specifically, specifically belonged to this, this, uh, kingdom. Not sure. If thy wish is to succeed poor Artorias and challenge the spread of the dark, then thou must face Manus, father of the abyss. The dark emanates from Manus himself. Even if this land shall expire, Thou may be able to prevent further corrosion, but even so, one day the flames will fade, and only dark will remain, and even a legend such as thine self can do nothing to stop that. It seems like he... This this also makes me believe that Lord Gwyn, at this point in the timeline, Lord Gwyn has the fame, the flames began to fade, the incident with Isolith, all that's already happened. Uh, Gwyn left and linked the flame, and that was supposed to perpetuate the Age of Fire, but it hasn't really stopped the flames from fading, and everyone is starting to realize that it's inevitable at this point, that at some point, Dark will consume the world. Now, do not mistake my words. I cherish my work. Wood carving is a nuanced art. I would have much to talk about with that blacksmith. In truth, how is the old chap, I wonder? Still hammering away, I should hope. Farewell, human. I await good tidings. He would have much to talk about with that blacksmith, referring, of course, to the giant blacksmith in An Orlando, who is, in fact, still hammering away ages, ages from, from this point in time where we actually are here in Ulusil. So he actually makes it, and it's really cool that uh, the hawk ring, 
That is... Goff's ring. If you remember, we found it next to the smith. So friends and artisans both. Really fascinating that the giants are kind of depicted as just being big, strong, hulking, stupid. But, you know, the giant blacksmith may not be eloquent, but he's obviously very skilled with his, his work and he has very delicate movements. Goff appears both skilled at carving, <laughs> can shoot dragons out of the sky blind just, just by the sound of them alone. But he also speaks quite eloquently. And he obviously has uh, a bit of of wisdom and knowledge to impart as well. So, I don't know. Goff's just really one of the best characters in the series. These dogs are real interesting. Almost looks like magma between their, like, scales or something, but... I'm not. I'm not entirely sure if it's supposed to be a dark, infe dark inf uh, infested dog, like what? But well, we see now the fog gate up ahead. Since Calamite has been shot down, that's now a boss room. And just back up, let them attack, and then hit the R1 button. Here we go. So this fight, the the enemy himself isn't necessarily super difficult, but he has a cuttable tail, and getting the tail cut is actually it, it can be a bitch. Like it, it just depends on how Calamite decides to move, as to whether or not you're going to be able to get it. So you know we'll see. It might take me a couple of tries, but we'll cut the tail because we need it. We need it. This is actually a really, really cool fight. Hopefully I haven't forgotten how to do it. Oh, there we go. That's actually what, exactly what we want to see now. Bait it. Ah, that was the swipe. I wanted the tail slam. See, he can do two different types of tail attacks in that situation. The swipe that he did, or he can do a tail slam. I dodged too early. Gotta get used to the timing again. Heal up. Oh, wow. <laughs> he doesn't use that one too often. Come on, fly at me. Fly at me, bro. Fly at me. Come on. Shit. Direct flame. That actually reaches farther than the uh, sweeping flames do. Not gonna fly at me. Sweeping flames. Sweeping flames, you just run to the side to avoid it. I dodged too late. And it comboed me. Shit. Here it is. Slam. Ah, oh, crap. Couldn't bait it. Ooh. That's nasty of you. Fly at me. Myself off. I might be too slow with that. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> okay, when he flies up like this, he's gonna breathe fire straight down, so you need to just kinda get the hell out of dodge. That's what we want. No, swiped. Fuck. There is a, a specific position that you need to stand in to bait the, um, the tail slam. We really need to see that tail slam in order to be able to cut his tail. You can do it with other moves. Like You can get his tail other ways, but this is by far the easiest. We're running out of boss room here. I need to get him to fly at me. Come on. Ugh. At max range, that fire sweep's no big deal at all. Tail swipe. Ah, rolled a little 
little too slow there. Oh shit, I might be dead. Oh yep, yeah, I'm dead. Whoopsie. But you can see sometimes baiting, and like I said, I, I mentioned this the other day, and it's no joke. It's been more than a year, possibly closer to two years, since I actually did this DLC, so. There's probably a trick to baiting that attack that I am not remembering right now. And that's okay. This is one thing, I think a lot of people when they play Dark Souls, or Demon Souls, any of the Souls games, Bloodborne also included, like, they die, and then they let that get to them. <coughs> Just dying doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't mean anything. Like, it, you, should, you should expect some deaths. Of course, you can play through the games without dying, and that's actually one of the, the really cool parts of the design, is that you can really play through the games without taking damage at all, for the most part. There's a couple of places where you're maybe forced to take a little bit of damage here and there, unless you have specific setups. Um, but... But overall... Ah, damn it. Rolled a little too early. But overall, it's not that bad, and I... I honestly had forgot. God bless it. Fucking damn it. Why am I rolling so. There. How the fuck? When I roll fast, they get me. When I roll slow, they get me. Oh, well. Um. But I, uh. Had honestly forgotten that he can do the, the flying swoop attack, and then if you're close after that, he can actually do the turnaround breath attack. I could have lived. I should have been running away, uh, from it, but. I had forgotten about the, the breath aspect of it. I was thinking it was just going to be a tail swipe, and so I was waiting to time my dodge. And that's what got me. Calamy, like I said, one of the the best fights in, in the game for me. Because he feels extremely fair. Like... Oh, shit. And that's why I normally ignore my souls. God damn it. Oh, man. That's the move I want. <laughs> he got me again. That's the move I wanted to see, too. For that, that is the move that we're going to punish. Like, if I don't fuck it up. Um, damn it. Gotta get my timing. I'm not even going to revive the human. Waste of fucking time. Uh, what was I going to say? I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. No, it's absolutely one of the fairest fights in the game. Like, in terms of... Everything that he does is very telegraphed. He's got a lot of HP. It's In, in many ways, it's very similar to Artorius. I like the Calamite fight better because... Just in terms of just simply defeating him, he's not any more difficult than Artorius is. And honestly, I wouldn't say he's any easier either. Uh, he may be a little bit harder because of the fact that he has fire elemental stuff. But um, overall, I find the two fights to be pretty similar in difficulty. But with Calamite specifically, he also has the tail for you to cut. And that's a little bit, like, can be a little bit RNG based depending on whether or not he gives you the move. Although, like I said, there is a particular place that you can stand to bait it. So it's not entirely RNG, but it makes the fight a lot more difficult if you're trying to get the tail. Me right now, I'm just strictly concerned with cutting his tail off. After we cut his tail off, then we're going to whip his ass. Like... And by the time you manage to get his tail... You ain't going to have no trouble killing. I ain't going to worry about... I ain't going to worry about my souls, my humanity, whatever. Fuck it. We don't need it. Oh shit. Hey, dude, don't do that. Don't do that. That's his grab attack. Oh, we can get his tail. Oh, we could have. Oh. Ooh. Got lucky there. I didn't realize, but I guess if you're close enough after that, he can't get you with it. Oh. 360 bite. Oh. Straight up fire. So you can heal that, run and heal that. Good. 
I'm right here. Ah, damn. Hmm, that's a different one. Wasn't the sweep and it wasn't the straight fire either. Something a little bit in between. He also has a stomp attack. When you're real close, just underneath his legs. Here. That's it. Ooh, we almost got it. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. I remember it now. There we go. I remember how to do it. <laughs> I remembered how to fight this guy. Just took a couple tries to remember the trick. The trick is actually to stand closer to the base of his tail. And then he'll just slam straight down like that. Don't have a tail anymore, bro. Oh, straight up fire. A couple of rolls will get us out of there. Oh, not quite. Whew. Oh, I was too slow. Aha. Uh oh. Get smacked. Gonna stomp? Nope. One, two, three. There, I'll roll three times that. Mm mm mm. There's stomps. Oops, I didn't roll again. I should have rolled twice. There's this grab. If he picks you up with that grab attack, and I will decrease the sound, don't worry, you guys. Uh, whoever did the sound design for that should be shot. <laughs> they shouldn't be shot, but it's really, like, it's very grating to the ears. And I get it, that's the point, but... Oh shit, the fire. Yeah, 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 ass. You see, when you're not worried about the tail, he's just really... Not so bad. Uh oh. Was it too slow? Nah, I made it. Might as well look cool when I finish him off. There we go. Jack. And that's Calamy. Like I said, he's not an overly difficult boss. And baiting his tail is less RNG heavy than I remember. I just need to remember the right place to stand. If you just stand right under his ass, like kind of close to the base of his tail, that will bait the slam down. And the trick to it is that it's very uh, straight line, very uh, like, unidirectional. So if you pretend that my Zweihander is the tail slamming down, bam. If you just dodge roll perpendicular to it and then counter attack, you can get the tail pretty easy. And I think it's like 540 something HP, something like that. I, I, I used to I used to know the, the number, but it, it's a couple of hits with a max Zweihander. If you're using a weaker weapon, it's obviously gonna take more hits, but just kind of keep your distance from him to bait the fly up as much as possible. Let him fly up in the air, and then at the last second, dodge away. Stand under his butt to bait the tail slam. Dodge to the side to avoid it, and then counterattack. Two-hand, R2, what have you, to do as much damage as you can to pierce through his defense. Because he does have a lot of HP, he does have a lot of defense. Uh, really, really, really cool fight. I know at this point it probably sounds like I'm just like, uh, uh, whatever, it's not, not very exciting. It's because, you know, I did a no healing kill on this guy a while back. And ever since then, it's I learned his patterns. But I had a lot of fun in the process of actually learning all of his patterns and stuff. 
and I've talked about this before, but to me, I feel like the act of playing a video game, a lot of it is in learning to play the game. The process of actually learning to play a game is some of the most fun times you can have with it. Golf's great arrow. And once again, today I am offline so that I can show you that this is once again a developer message. If only Hawkeye were here. A hint, if you're down here and you're running around, he'll keep breathing fire on you and you'll keep dying and he'll keep flying around. Ha ha! Making a fool out of you. And if you're struggling, they left this here. If you can actually get to this message, you can get a hint. Actually, you need help. Wondering exactly where we are. I mean, this is obviously the basin, but... The land is somewhat changed from what we're used to. Actually... I guess... Try to see. Would this be where the Crystal Golem was? In... Present day? Where Dusk is? And where we eventually find the Corpse of Dusk? Would this be the spot right here? Perhaps the Earth has shifted somewhat. Because there's a... Uh, a cave wall here. It, I, it's actually kind of like a cave area, if so. I'm not sure. Really fascinating. But I believe that that's the waterfall that we can see in present day right there. We got some of Golf's great arrows. Soul of a hero. Soul of a brave warrior. So a hero and a couple of brave warriors trying to take him on. A dragon high above the sky, out of sight of the naked eye. <laughs> Warning, you're about to get fire breathed on you if you're reading that message <laughs> before you've killed Calamite. And right here, going back to what I was saying about you should definitely, absolutely have a maxed out weapon before you fight Artorias. You can access this treasure right here. This Titanite slab before you fight Calamite. You don't actually have to beat Calamite to get that. Like, you can either suicide it, like, you can just hop down and run over here and pick it up and then suicide. Or you can slide down that ladder and then sneak along the back wall all the way to the treasure and then quickly homeward bone out or use the uh, escape miracle, the homeward miracle. And either way, you'll be able to get out with that Titanite slab. So you can absolutely... have a maxed weapon without a whole lot of issue before defeating Calamite. I mean, of course, you can still, you can get one from the Stray Demon in the Asylum, so like... But this one is just a few steps away from Artorius's door. Actually, let's go ahead and level up something. Uh, it might be about time to start leveling up our damn Vitality. Nah, we'll keep it, we'll keep it low just so the enemies still have a chance to kill us. Do 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 do. Dex. Strength. Actually, let me let me go ahead and take my strength up because there are still some some strength weapons that we can't use yet. Notably, I haven't been able to show off any of the great axe class yet. I, I want to show some of those off. First, let's report our success. Lord Goff. I'm calling him Lord Goff. You might be saying, oh, the game don't call him Lord Goff. Well, yeah, I'm calling him Goff-sama. He's awesome. He's the fucking shit. We did it, bro. Bro, we did it. Why? Thou hast defeated Kalamit? Wondrously played. Lord Wins blessing upon me. That beast will never take to the skies again. Ah, this great bow? I shan't need it, but no dragons to hunt. I know not if a human could even operate it. But here, 
I need Outway's mine. Now, do not mistake my words. I cherish my work. Wood carving is a nuanced art. I would have much to talk about with that blacksmith. In truth, how is the old chap, I wonder? Still hammering away, I should hope. Farewell, proud human. May every honor be bestowed upon thee. He gives us... He wishes us Lord Gwyn's blessing. Kind of another indicator of how he feels about Lord Gwyn, even still to this day, even in his imprisonment. Once again, I don't think Gwyn had anything to do with his imprisonment. But all right, we picked up a lot of stuff. Notably, the Obsidian Great Sword. It's called a Great Axe. I'm not sure that it's actually supposed to be classed as a Great Axe. I think it's probably just a typo. Whether it's a typo in the Great Sword or the Great Axe, I think it's actually. I think it is classed as a Great Sword. So. Uh, this great axe, one of the rare dragon weapons, is formed by the tail of the one-eyed black dragon Calamy, the last of the ancient dragons. The mystical power of its obsidian blade will be released when held with both hands. And once again, this is one of those flat physical damage with no scaling. Uh, let me go down. <laughs> go. Let me go down, down, down. There we go. We don't want to piss off golf. Well, eventually we will, unfortunately, but not today. Not today. We'll go down to Artorius' arena. I think that's an appropriate place to show off weapons. The move set for this kind of standard great sword stuff here should be an overhead. Yeah, similar to the uh, bastard sword. Spinning slash. Spinning slash. Yep. And then in two hands, R1, back step. It's the spin. Another spin. And here is the the unique point. It's cost weapons dur weapon durability to do. So you see we're at 350 of 350. But then the special move, two-handed R2. Costs a lot of stamina and also it costs weapon durability. 50 points. But you can call out Calamite's Black Fire. If you just meet the stat requirements for this weapon, like if you only have, uh, say, like 20 strength 16 decks or actually not even 20 strength if you have somewhat less strength but you're two-handing it um if you just meet the weapon requirements this is actually a pretty good weapon um da, 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 da. of course if you're leveling up your stats then something with more scaling is going to be better in the end but yeah what, what else do we get we got a ring we got calamites calamity ring receive double damage a ring enchanted by the orange eye of Calamite, the bringer of Calamity, doubles damage received by its wearer. A useless ring befitting of no finger, best left unknown, or at least well hidden. It just doubles your it just doubles the damage that you take with the little eye of Sauron looking thing above your head. And um I guess it's meant for players that are wanting to challenge themselves further. Like if you're at max new game pluses and then you want to use a calamity ring or what have you personally i really dislike like I, I this is this is this is to me this is just as bad as games that have a normal mode easy mode normal mode hard mode and then hard mode just scales all the numbers up and like no adjustments to how that game's actually played there's nothing like organic or fun about the way the difficulty grows and beyond that there's no reward for uh, taking on the higher difficulty. Like if it at least increased the souls that you got or increased your drop rates or other things like that, it would be interesting, but it doesn't. It doesn't do any of those things. So yeah, I, I'm honestly not a fan of this item. If wearing it 
would give you different drops or some sort of benefit like some for me having increased difficulty should also come with increased rewards that's just my personal uh, preference I guess I guess it's my preference but I, I think it's good game design uh, beyond that I would also like this is me this would be this would take a lot more work and this is the reason why people don't do this but like if this ring instead of just doubling the damage that you take if it made enemies more aggressive or if it gave uh, bosses like an additional move that they could use against you something like that change the difficulty in some other way it would be a lot more interesting of an item it would be a lot more fun uh, but like I said Dark Souls overall is pretty good about letting you have dynamic difficulty uh, in the different fights like Ornstein and Smo being able to choose which one you kill first and which one you fight in their super form or against Kalamit like I said the fight itself is pretty easy but if you go to cut the tail it takes a lot more time and so it gives Kalamit more chances to kill you like those sorts of things I really love and I really love those aspects of Dark Souls but the Calamity Ring is one of the more disappointing it was it's one of those things where I just felt like they really didn't get it like for me like they, they I don't know it needed to have some sort of reward with it or it needed to do more than just like double numbers that that's boring it's boring it's a boring item and I, I say this obviously a huge fan of these games but I have criticisms too like I, I and I only criticize them and speak out because I I love them and I'm want them to improve or rather I hope that other game designers who who enjoy these games and are looking for the things that are good about them things that are good about them I hope that they they notice points like that anyway that's my little rant on that so like I said I recognize that it could be preference at some point but that's I have I feel very strongly about that that increased challenge should bring increased reward and that simply increasing numbers, while it does increase difficulty, uh, is also a very boring way of increasing difficulty. We got Goff's Great Bow. Great Bow used by Hawkeye Goff of Lord Gwyn's Four Knights for dragon slaying. This bow is larger than even those used by the famed dragon slayers. Only their leader, Goff, had the strength to handle it. Let's see, it takes 27 strength. And it has even higher shot range than the Great Bow does. Massive, massive, massive weapon. No! <laughs> Have to use Dragon Slayer arrows or Goff's Great Arrows. Anchor to the ground and fire. Very cool. We might try to use this to kill uh, Calamit in New Game Plus. Maybe I don't know. It might be better to do that in a different, on a different character. I'm not sure. One last thing that we will have to do with Golf, we will have to kill him. Which honestly, he's fairly tricky to kill, or he can be. He, that little arena that you fight him in is kind of kind of rough, but we're gonna put that off. <laughs> as much as possible just because I really really like golf and I don't want to kill him Whee! yeah actually right now I'm um, me and a friend of mine are gearing up development on the shmup that I've been working on I'm not going to talk too much about it, but uh, the kind of organic difficulty is strong with this one, I, I promise you. Ooh, I don't have any poise. Shit. <laughs> Let's see. Damn you, woman. You're still... 
She just won't die. <laughs> People are gonna start to not believe me about this. I swear, I swear, I swear, Petrus will kill her. He will kill her. It's just he's taking his sweet time about it. But yeah. Hopefully I'll be able to talk more about the shmup soon. It's, um... Uh, I had an idea the other day that's frankly gonna knock some people's socks off, but anyway. Guys, I am Marcus, also known as EMB. Calamite and Golf, this is always <laughs> this is always one of the best parts of the game to me. I've really enjoyed the day. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this too, because it's just uh, it's honestly a little bit bittersweet. Because from from here from here on it's almost like downhill a little bit because this is like the pinnacle of the game to me. We still have the Manus fight, which is cool, but I just I really love Calamy. So I am Marcus, also known as EMB. Today's thing should be very obvious. <laughs>